Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, AK Reads. Today we're going to be continuing the book, Gerani Mom Stilton, A Cheese Coloured Camper. King of the road, at last we were ready to leave. Granddad drove down the block. Two minutes later, we had discovered we had a little problem. No, make that up. Two little problems. Benjamin and Trap had come down with rodent pox. They were covered from head to toe with rodent pox. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, AK Reads. Today we're going to be reading the book, Geronimo Stilton, A Cheese Coloured Camper. King of the Road. At last, we were ready to leave. Grandad drove down the block. Two minutes later, we discovered we had a little problem. No, make that two little problems. Benjamin and Trap had come down with rodent pox, and they were covered to, from head to toe with red bumps. We turned home to drop them off. Now, there were only four of us. Grandad, of course sat behind the wheel. Tina banged pots and pans in the kitchen. My sister took photos leaning in and out the window. And I read the map. I tried to give Grandfather William directions, but as usual, he wouldn't listen. When I told him to turn left, he insisted on turning right. Don't be a backseat driver, grandson, he barked. I know where we're going. You forget I've travelled all over the world. I have my own map right here inside my noggin. He tapped his head. Yep, I've got a memory like a steel trap. I can find my way to the Swiss cheese islands with my eyes closed. I can make it to Mount Everest with one paw tied behind my back. I can even walk and chew cheese at the same time. In the end, we got lost. We travelled for hours along a deserted road. We didn't pass one single road sign. By nightfall, we found ourselves in the middle of a forest. Grandad didn't seem to mind. He just kept driving and driving. I tried to use the super high-tech satellite system, but it was so confusing and the instruction manuals was missing. Finally, Grandfather William pulled over. I will think I'll take a rest, he announced. Who wants to drive? Nobody squeaked. Do you know why? It's an absolute nightmare driving with the granddad. He barks out orders all the time. He even throws a fit if you blink. Grandfather William says he's the king of the road. Sometimes he even wears a crown while he's driving. It was a gag gift from Trap, but Grandad took it seriously. Who's taking the wheel? No time for dilly-dallying. Grandfather shouted now. I can't do it all. Even a genius needs a to rest sometimes. We were all in a panic. We couldn't keep driving. We were terribly lost. Geronimo, do something, Theo whispered to me. Maybe you could go out and look for help. I turned pale. Me? Go out into the deep, dark woods? I'll rather cut off my tail. Well, not okay, not my tail, but maybe my whiskers. Or maybe just some fur. Why, why me? I stammered. My sister gave me a look. Oh, stop being such a scaredy mouse, Geronimoid, she scolded. I would go myself, but I haven't showered. What if I ran into a cute mouse? I rolled my eyes. My sister goes on more dates than Sylvia Silver, the famous movie star. Just then, Tina winked at my sister. 
She waved a ruling pin at me. Mr. Stockton, would you mind if you go outside to see if it's raining? She asked. I barely let the camp in when slam! The doors shut behind me. I heard the lock click. She's niblets. I've been tricked again. I screamed for them to let me in, but no one answered. I was all alone in the deep, dark, spooky woods. I heard my sister singing in the shower. She'd probably been there for an hour. And then for another hour fluffling. Was she making double cheese lasagna? Her fur. It was as if she'd forgotten about me. Didn't she care about me at all? Tina was back in the kitchen. I could hear her rolling pin slamming into the countertop. What was she making this time? A double cheese lasagna? A cheddar casserole? I sobbed. I would never get a chance to find out. I just knew something horrible was going to happen. I mean, I was in the middle of the wilderness and it was so dark. And what if a wild animal attacked me? And what if I fell off an icy cliff? And what if space mice picked me up and brought me back to their leader? Oh, how could my sister do this to me? She's one of the brickest mouse I know. Nothing scares her. She loves parachuting off dangerous mountaintops, racing a motorcycle, practicing karate. She's a black belt, doing stunts with the airplane, extreme survival camps. Yes, my sister, Thea, is one courageous mouse. She's not afraid of anything or anyone. What a show off. I looked around, shivering. The forest was as black as ink. Luckily, I remembered I had a tiny flashlight attached to my key ring. I pulled it out. The light was faint. Are you afraid of the dark? I am. Shadows loomed everywhere. The branches on the trees looked like skeletons reaching for the sky. Moths transformed into birds and birds screeched overhead. I gulped. My paws shook so hard I almost dropped the flashlight. Then I saw a shadow. It was behind me. It was big and furry. And it had a long tail. Rat munching rattlesnakes, I screeched. Who are you? What do you want? No one answered. So I ran like crazy. The shadow followed. I tripped. The shadow tripped too. I got up. The shadow got up. Just then it hit me. I was running from my own shadow. Stilton himself? I stopped. I wanted to go back to the camper. But now I had no idea where I was. I started running down a path. It had to lead to somewhere, right? I ran and I ran and I ran. Until I tripped again. Did I mention I'm a bit of a klutz? My snout banged into the ground. Youch! I sat up in a daze. That's when I saw him. A furry rodent standing down at me. Grandfather, I mumbled. How did you find me? Where is the camp? The other rodent flashed a blinding light in my eyes. Grandfather, he repeated. He sounded confused. I stood up. No, this wasn't my cranky granddad. He was a stranger. He had a big square head and a square snout and a square shoulders. Even his tail looked square. How odd. Who are you? What do you want? He squeaked wearily. 
I told him my whole tale about Grandfather William, the super camper, and getting lost. I left out the part about me running from my shadow. I didn't want him to make fun of me. After all, we had just met. Then I told him my name, Geronimo Stilton. Stilton, he exclaimed, Geronimo Stilton, the famous writer. He shook my paw excitedly. My name is Slivester Squaretail, he announced. May I have your autograph with my name too? I grinned. I must admit I love running into my fans. They're so sweet, so sincere, so smart. How do I know they're smart? They must be. They like to read my books. I didn't have any paper, so I wrote my autograph on a leaf. I hope Slivester didn't drop it in the woods. He'd never find it in this dark, creepy place. And that's the end of this chapter of Geronimo Stilton, a cheese-coloured camper. I hope you enjoy it. Bye!